Thanks for joining us today for another video from Howard Piano Industries. Uh, today's uh, very important uh, video that we're going to be sharing with you today is um, on uh, going through the entire regulation uh, sequence for a vertical piano. Um, we have a number of different videos that show you all the different details about uh, the, the various steps in regulating pianos, but this um, particular video is going to be going through um, how those steps all work together to bring the the piano into uh, full regulation. Uh, here we've got a console piano. Um, this uh, this regulation procedure works for spinet console or tall upright uh, pianos, um, studios, and so forth. Um, so um, it's the same process because all the parts are basically the same in, in uh, all vertical pianos. Uh, so there are some variations with spinet pianos um, that we'll go through in another video, but uh, this is the basic uh, process to to go through on a vertical piano regulation. Now, <clears throat> regulating the action of a piano is uh, going through and adjusting all the parts to make it so that the pl piano plays well. Um, you may see uh, lists that have uh, specific regulation spec specifications um, that you can go by and those are good starting points but um, uh, they certainly aren't set in stone and uh, when it comes to the end of things and when you all finished when you're all finished regulating the piano the main thing does it play well um, you know, I recently heard from a customer that uh, that got the piano action handbook which I'll show you in a moment here um, and he used those specific specifications uh, for setting distances on the regulation on his piano, and he said it doesn't work uh, correctly. Well, um, there's usually some modifications oftentimes in, to those specific specifications to, to make the piano play well. So we're going to go through uh, step by step and show you um, some things to watch for and, and how all those steps work together. Now, um, this uh, piano action handbook that I just mentioned uh, is a book that we've got um, available in our online store compiled by Randy Potter um, and uh, it has regulation specs on many different brands. It includes key height, sharp height, hammer blow, let off, key dip, and back check distance for many different uh, models of pianos. It doesn't have all pianos. Obviously there's hundreds of different brands, especially from uh, from many, many years ago. They used to make a lot more pianos than they do now, but it gives the most common um, and some of the, a lot of the more recent uh, types of pianos that are available or that are out there. But these are these are good starting points um, and you can you can regulate a piano without having those those uh, specifications. Um, you know, we can. You, you, there's things we're going to talk about on how to determine, you know, about where things should be if you don't have those starting points to, to start with. Um, but uh, the nice thing about this book not only has uh, regulation specs, but it also has regulation checklists. Okay, here we've got uh, the vertical. Uh, regulation checklist. It goes down, goes through step by step. It even has the pre-regulation sequence and, excuse me, pre prepare, preparing the um, the piano for going through the regulation process. Okay, so that's a nice checklist to have to make sure that you're doing all the all the steps in order and and uh, going through and not skipping anything. If you st if you tend to skip any of the uh, steps, uh, you might have problems uh, in part of your process. So, um, so that's that's the nice thing about that book. It has a vertical regulation checklist and also a grand piano regulation checklist because the grand piano, which we'll be covering in another video, our regulation for that is a, a different process. So um, when when now as we go into um, uh, regulating the piano. The first thing you want to do is make sure that um, you do the regulation process on anywhere from three to five notes. Okay, you want to do either um, either two white keys and one black key, or we can do three white keys and two black keys. So either three or five keys. Now, if you do it, and because if you go through and you regulate, you know, the whole piano one step and then go to step two and regulate the whole piano, uh, you might find in the end things don't work right by the time you get to the last step. So you wanted to go through all the, the main steps of regulation on just a few notes. 
uh, and get that working really well first, so you know that what so you know what uh, regulation um, uh, measurements um, are going to work for your particular piano. So uh, we're going to go through and, and uh, talk about uh, what steps. Again, we won't go through all the details of every step because we have uh, more details in other videos um, that uh, we can refer you to. But uh, we're going to show you how to how to make it all work and make all the steps work together. Now the first um, thing that you want to do is uh, you want to regulate the hammer blow distance, okay, and that's the distance from the face of the hammer to the string, okay, and, and uh, we've got, like I say, we've got a video that uh, shows how to adjust that, but, um, you know, and there's, there's different uh, distances based on how large your piano is. A smaller piano is going to have a little bit less hammer blow distance than a larger piano, but uh, that's the first thing you want to set because um, setting the hammer blow distance, you know, kind of affects everything else. Uh, and once you've got that set, um, in, in a piano like this size, um, you, you know, you're going to look at about about an inch and f uh, three quarters, inch and five eighths. Um, in a larger piano you might be with an inch and three quarters, inch and seven eighths, uh, something like that. So, so that's uh, a good place to start. The next thing that you want to do is regulate the, uh, the capstans, okay? Um, and what that is is here, if we take a key out, the cap stand is right here, and having that um, adjusted correctly, uh, and what we what we call that, if you see, see our video on regulating lost motion, uh, that's what that does. Okay, so you want to you want to set it so that um, you don't have ex excess lost motion. You should have just a just a little bit of key movement, just a tiny bit of key movement before the uh, the jack engages the hammer butt. Okay, so again we can see our other video and, and uh, the details of how to adjust that. And again, just to remind you we're only doing this on three to five notes. Okay, so so we're going to check our hammer blow distance and then regulate uh, the lost motion or the capstans. Uh, the next thing you want to do is uh, set your white key height. Okay, and to do this you want to you want to get a uh, basic measurement. Now we we I've already got the the name board of the fall board off here, but um, you want to generally get a key height that um, is not so high that you can't lift the key a little bit, and you don't want it so low so that when you push the key down, it, the top of the key is coming all the way down to the key slip. Okay, let me move you down here a little bit so you can see better. But the the key slip is down here. So if, if the top of that key is coming down, so that it's you know close to the level of the key, to the top of the key slip, that's too low. Okay. The other thing is you can check this. You know if you've got, you should be about square. Okay. The the same width of this as the key front is. You want to be have about that same amount. And that's that's a general rule. It's that's not definitely a hard and fast rule, but um, but that's a general idea of of you know if you've got the key too high. So so those are some some parameters to parameters to work within as you're uh, setting your key height, um, and uh, that can be adjusted here and there. And you can adjust the key height by putting more or less punchings um, on the balance rail. Uh, which is is back here under the on this pin. Um, then once you've got your your uh, white key height set, then you're going to set your sharp key height. Okay, and and uh, generally or basically, you want the the sh height of the sharp to be a half inch above the. Uh, the, the height of the white key. Okay, we've got a sharp leveling device that uh, that works real good. You can use a stainless steel rule, um, you know, to measure that to make sure you're at the right height. But it's half inch from the the from the top of the sharp down to the top of the white key. Um, then once you've once you've set your once you've set your key height. You might need to go back and do some slight adjustments to your capstan again because if you've changed that key height at all, that can uh, change the adjustment on your capstan. Okay, so you want to you want to just check that to see if that needs some slight uh, adjustment at all. Once you've um, once you've set your um, 
set your key height and, and double checked your capstans, the next step in the process is to regulate the let off, okay? And uh, again, we've got another video that shows you uh, let off and, and how to adjust it. Um, but what you're going to do is um, let off is the point that the hammer goes with with the movement of the key. Okay, if you push it down very slowly like I'm doing here and push it all the way, the hammer, uh, if it's if it's adjusted correctly, shouldn't go all the way to the strings. Okay, if it does, then it's going to block and, and not work correctly. You're going to have all kinds of problems. So, um, so you want to check your where the where the hammer lets off. Okay, and let off is the point at when the hammer goes forward and falls back. Okay, and that should be generally between an eighth and a sixteenth of an inch. Um, you want to have it the same on all the hammers, so if you have it at eighth inch on one hammer, um, you can want to have it eighth inch on all the hammers. Some will say, well, eighth inch in the base, base and a sixteenth inch in the treble. Um, you know, so, but you can try some different things. If it's too close, you know, you might have some bobbling of the hammers. Uh, bobbling is where it doesn't, um, where it doesn't catch correctly and, and it'll wobble. So, um, so that's the next thing you want to do is regulate that, that let off. Now, um, once you've got that set, uh, the next step in the process is to, uh, set the white key dip. Okay, and, and again, we've got another video on showing how to adjust the key dip uh, and the aftertouch. And um, the key dip is the amount of, uh, or the distance, that the key will go down um, before it stops. Okay, so the distance from, if, you, if all your keys are level, which when we're doing three, by this time in the process, you should have... Uh, you should have at least two or three white notes that are all level with each other if you've done if you've done your um, your key height your uh, white key height so so what you can do is press down uh, if you've got if you've got three white keys press down the one in the middle and uh, double check you can use a stainless steel rule or you can use a key dip block uh, but stainless steel rule will actually measure the distance and you want to measure it from from the front edge of the key uh, to the to the top of the key next to it to see how um, how much distance you have there. Generally, they say about three eighths of an inch, uh, but that's going to vary, especially as we get into checking our um, aftertouch to see what um, uh, you know if if we've got the the right amount after aftertouch. So we usually start it with about three eighths inch, and then do fine adjustments with it. Um, you know, once we determine how much aftertouch we want to have, uh, so so check that and adjust that. You you adjust the um, key dip by putting more or less punchings um, on the front rail pin. Okay, and that's underneath here. There's a pin that um, that the key the front of the key sits on. That's the front rail pin, and um, there's a, usually a felt punching, and then under that there's you're going to have paper or cardboard punching. So you adjust the the number of paper or cardboard punchings and different thicknesses to adjust how um, how much key dip you have. Um, and then once you've done the key once you've done the key dip for the white keys, then you're going to do it for the sharps. Now the sharps um, generally they want you to uh, the best thing to do is to do it by by feel. Okay, what you do is you feel how much distance that white key goes down. And you want the sharps to go down about the same or just a slight amount less. Uh, but in general, you want to you want to get the same feel for the sharps as you do as you do for the white notes. Okay, so um, adjusting that dip, and again, there's a front rail pin underneath the sharps as well. Um, and we've already adjusted the height and the levelness and so forth of those. Um, so that's the next thing to do is to set the the sharp key dip. Um, the next step after the the key dip is to adjust the um, the back checks. And what we're going to do is we're going to align align them to make sure that they're they're good side to side, um, and then just make sure that they're not uh, you know that they're square. And we have an, another video that shows how to align and, and square and space the back checks. 
Um, and then you want to make sure your angle is good so that when you push down the key, here, kind of a bobbling hammer there, but uh, was, when you, as you press down the key, it, uh, it lands squarely um, on, that, uh, on that catcher there. <clears throat> um, and then the next step after that, after you've uh, adjusted the back checks for, um, for alignment and being square and so forth, is make sure that the, adjust the, the distance that they catch. Okay, and we've got, uh, again, as, as you can probably imagine, we've got a video for that also. Um, but as, we, as you push down the key, you want that key to catch at about five eighths of an inch, roughly. Okay, um, and uh, again, you want it to be consistent from one from one hammer to the next, where that where that catches and where that uh, that hammer checks. Now, the um, the final um, main step of the of the regulation process is checking our aftertouch, and this is this is really where it adjusts. You know what the feel of the piano is. Okay, aftertouch is the amount of movement or the distance that the key moves after let off has occurred. Okay, we've got uh, specific instructions on how to um, check your aftertouch. Again, we talked in that video about how much aftertouch you should have. Um, uh, generally, you know, around thirty thousandths of an inch. You know, it's it's all. This is this at th this point. Aftertouch is uh, somewhat a personal preference. I mean, there are there are um, things that are felt like normal, but to, to a lot of pianists, but some like to have a little bit more key dip, uh, and some like to have a little bit you know more shallow key dip. Okay, and this so this is where we're going to fine tune that um, that that key dip to to what's called aftertouch. If you've got a, a a larger amount of aftertouch or, or a greater amount of aftertouch, your, the key is going to tend to feel a little bit heavier to the pianist, um, and it's going to it's and it's, it might even feel like it actually has more power. But uh, some don't like to have as much uh, as as much um, key dip, okay? Because they they want to have you actually get a little more control with less key dip. So so you've got you got more power if you've got more key dip, and you've got a little more control if you've got a little bit less key dip. So th th those things, you want to find a balance between those two to find what works best for this par that particular piano that you're working with, um, as well as, you know, maybe the preference of the, p of the person playing the piano. So, so adjusting that to, you know, to what's best, you know, somewhere between 20 and 40 thousandths of an inch is, um, you know, is a good, uh, good weight. Some like a little bit more than that, a little more than 40 thousandths, but uh, generally that's the, the range that you want to work in is somewhere in the 20 to 40 thousandths. Now, um, as you're adjusting that, you may have to adjust it so that um, if, you, if you're getting bobbling hammers, um, you might have to have a little more key dip um, than than you know what the, what you have, uh, so that uh, the hammer can check correctly. But um, that's the you know, and there are other more minor steps than that in the regulation process. Obviously, we've got a whole thing, a whole list of things to check in preparation for for going through this regulation process and um, I didn't uh, go through the the steps of regulating the pedals and so forth but we have videos that uh, show you how to do that but those those steps that I just went through that um, those are the those are the main uh, steps that you're going to go through to it uh, you know to make adjustments in regulating the action so that it plays well and those those steps go together and again we're going to do it on three to five notes first because if you can get those three to five notes to play correctly then you know okay well here are my adjust here are my uh, measurements that I need to have uh, for all of those for those different steps for the whole keyboard um, and uh, once you've got, and, and even once you've got those three to five done and you start doing more notes, maybe once you get done with a section, double check it. Go through it and make sure that everything's working correctly. Maybe make some slight adjustments if, if, um, if need be, but um, for the most part, if you can get those three to five notes working really well um, first, then everything else should fall into place fairly quickly. So...
um, uh, you know, this should hopefully bring together some information um, based on our other videos that that uh, may have been missing in, in the whole process. But um, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us. Our website is howardpianoindustries.com.